generation is more liberal, more tolerant, more democrat-leaning than the one before. It's not just because they're young. For another point of view, it's hard news with Russell Brown and Wemo on Kiwi. It's from publicaddress.net, the hard news blog there. Also the Media 7 show on TVNZ7. And it's been Russell Brown. Good day, Russell. Good morning. Let's talk uh, WikiLeaks and the documents that were leaked to WikiLeaks about uh, the war in Afghanistan this, this morning. Yeah, yeah, five years' worth of them, 2004 to 2009, 75,000 uh, leaked reports. Wow. Uh, which is kind of, it's been described this week as, as the raw data of war. Uh, so not everything in these files might be true, but these are the initial reports. And they show that uh, basically a lot more small bad things happened than we ever got, got told about. What and kinds of things? expected that, but... Uh, what kinds of things that um, really stand out? Usually um, civilians getting caught in the crossfire. Yeah. That just seems to be really consistent. And the same thing as we saw in Iraq is young soldiers panicking and trying to shoot their way out of places uh, and basically firing randomly. This, this seems to be a real pattern of that, particularly with U.S. troops. Mm. Uh, they panic and they fire randomly and um, kill civilians. Um, interestingly... Um, the Sydney Morning Herald this morning has uh, the details of what appears to be a cover-up by Australian troops. Mm. So it's the first one that's come back on them. Um, again, the same sort of thing. Uh, itchy trigger finger. Uh, they shot an Afghan policeman and uh, then manipulated the evidence afterwards so it looked like um, uh, they acted reasonably when perhaps they didn't. Uh, and, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how much more of that is. Uh, there is... Um, no right turn. Uh, the local blogger um, searched out all the entries for New Zealand. Not actually all that interesting. No? No. Um, our guys don't seem to have um, done any, you know, you know, any particularly bad things. They've been targeted by IEDs more than, we find, more than we've been told. Right. So they've been at greater risk than we've been told, but... Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, there's not a scandal about um, our small number of troops there. I also wonder, um, though, uh, if it's because our troops operate in a um, in a high at a higher security level. I was um, I saw a, a commentator yesterday, a security analyst in the state, saying that the the information that's been released is um, you know it is it is uh, top secret stuff, but it's not the uh, the upper echelon. Yeah, yeah, and it's not officially top secret. That has a particular meaning. Yeah. Um, there are, people have been discussing that sort of beyond my ability to um, to grasp it really uh, on public address over the past day. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It is. It would appear that there would be things above this. Um, it, it's interesting though that um, Julian Assang, who is WikiLeaks and um, who in the past I think has has acted in some quite worrying ways and really just dumped stuff out there, uh, has taken it a bit differently this time and. Uh, apparently in agreement with a source, has actually held back uh, 15,000 documents. So there were actually 90,000 in total. And he's held back 15,000 for security reasons. Mm. Uh, because the, the, you know, the biggest fear about something like this is that if this information just gets dumped out in the wild, it might have intelligence information that refers to someone who's at risk and people will get killed. But isn't that the defence that the, the American government always always uses? You know, yeah, rather than yeah. actually talking about the content, they say, oh, this is, this is crazy, we're going to get more people killed because of this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and you're right there too. Uh, the, the other thing that, that the saying has done is worked with, this time, uh, uh, three publications, The Spiegel in Germany, The Guardian, and The New York Times. Mm. And there I, I've met the guy that uh, uh, he has been liaising with at The Guardian, David Lee, and he's a, an extraordinarily good investigative journalist. So I, I, you know, I think WikiLeaks can be a little bit random and dangerous, but the fact that they're working with these very accomplished, very experienced investigative journalists is actually quite encouraging. Mm. And The Guardian's certainly been going hell for leather on it, uh, and they've done a really nice job of it too. And apparently we can expect part two? Yeah, there will, there will be more. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much more to come. Um, it, it, I think the, the interesting thing will be how much people start to deduce about who the source is, uh, because the, the obvious suspect is um, a 22-year-old intelligence officer, Bradley Manning. And it is astonishing that a 22-year-old has um, access to all this stuff. 
uh, who was the source of the military video, the helicopter um, shooting mm. in Iraq in 2007 mm. that, that was released earlier this year. Uh, the, the, the suspicion is that, that he's also the source here, although uh, the guy that dobbed him in uh, has said he didn't, didn't think he has the skills to do it. So. Okay. But, um, yeah, there'll be more. Um, but, yeah, I, it is uh, gratifying to see that um, the New Zealand troops, as far as we know, don't seem to have done anything too awful. Yeah. I'd also be interested, from a media point of view, uh, if if in any, any of these these um, secretive situations there were, were embedded media who didn't report on what they saw, quite, quite probably actually. Although um, I mean, there's, there's I think that a lot of this goes on without the media being there. But no, that, that's entirely possible. Mm. Uh, the iPad released on Friday. You were um, one of the first in the queue, Russell. Yeah, yeah. No, I got, I got myself an iPad. I wasn't going to buy one. Um, before they came out here, I mean, I knew people who rushed out and got them from the states, and uh, yeah, with some of them it was because they were developers and they needed to know. But basically, the whole point of devices like this, particularly Apple devices, is the kind of end-to-end -end ecosystem. So you want a local iTunes store, uh, and you want local content. Yeah, um, I, it, it's interesting actually. I I have been surprised at how much I like uh, web browsing on it. Um, you know, multi-touch web browsing where you can just zoom in on the column you want to read is actually very pleasant, especially in the lounge. Uh, the only thing is, I, I, I think I might have to get a, a, a case for it because it slides off my knee. Yeah. Uh, but the thing I thought I would like, which was the dedicated editorial apps, I'm really underwhelmed by. Um, the BBC News one's ugly. Um, the Vanity Fair one's annoying. Uh, the local ones are actually uh, uh, actually fare quite well. The, the Herald and North and South apps, I think, are actually pretty good. Are they are they like page flickers? What are they? Um, are they like? Yeah, yeah. The um, the North and South one, you buy an issue via the app, six dollars forty nine. That's a, that's an iTunes store purchase, um, and it actually works reasonably well. And it's consistent, unlike the Vanity Fair one, which. Um, you know, basically, you want to know whether to swipe left or right mm. or go up and down, mm. and it changes depending on where you are in the Vanity Fair one, which is just awful. Yeah. Uh, but the the North and South one is actually um, uh, principally built by Cactus Lab, who uh, public addresses developers. Yeah. Uh, and they are already award-winning um, iPhone developers, uh, so they have a running start on this. I, w I want to see the publications that um, have rich media embedded in the pages. Yeah, I, I had a look at the um, Sports Illustrated one. It's a big, long download. Um, it does, yeah, it, it works. Um, you, know, you, you can play the rich media inside there. It, it's, almost, oddly enough, not quite as compelling as you'd think. Hmm. Um, one thing that has happened just this week is that YouTube has had uh, an HTML5 uh, video beta go on because... Uh, Steve Jobs has uh, decreed, for you know, quite reasonable reasons, that Flash will not appear on the iPad, yeah. you know, Flash video. Yeah. Uh, and uh, YouTube's been running uh, an HTML5 video beta for uh, several months now, but it hasn't had full screen or um, embeddable video. And both of those got launched this week. And the first video I saw who got, uh, who got to use it was uh, Barack Obama. Oh, in his uh, speech to Netroot Nations, that went up on YouTube as, um, as HTML5, and it looked fabulous. Uh, and, of course, there's nzonscreen.com, um, where there's a whole lot of iPad-compatible video, too. Oh, that's good. good. Indeed. More local content. Thanks very much, Russell. All right. Cheers, Cheers. At Media7 uh, on TVNZ7, also at publicaddress.net.